eyes down for the water. Good morning folks. Wednesday. I was on another job yesterday. And it's time to reassemble the headstock. And I've got the felts in. And I've soaked them in oil. And I've got the bearings in. And I've got the little pallets in. Here, here and here. So what I guess you have to do now. Is to fit the cover. Tighten it up until the pallets and the screw holes line up. And then fit the screws. So there you go. So these pallets and the grub screws push the bearing inwards and these anchor the bearing and pull it outwards. So we've got two way adjustment. So let's put it together. I'll do the same at the other side and then we'll see how it works. Okay, bye now. Right folks, 12.30, we've fitted the oilers and packed them with oil. We've fitted the uh, felts in the bearings and we've, uh, uh, this is just an offer up to check the freedom of the bearings and they are, it's beautiful. I haven't adjusted anything yet. Uh, I just need to uh, check that it's going in smoothly and check it's not trapping the felts. And then I can assemble all the bits on and put it together. So there we go. And that seems very free to me, very nice and smooth. Okay, right, I'll bring you back when I've done some more. Bye now. Right folks, sudden change of plan. I realise that I cannot fit this into there until I have made the new bull pin because the pin fits through there and the guide screw, the guide screw, the lock, not lock screw, the guide screw that fits in that slot goes in there, which fits inside there. So, it's make a bullpen time. I'll bring you back when I'm set up. Bye now. Right folks, there we are. Set up in the, uh, in the lathe and marked out for the head. I've got to make this on a piece of half inch bar because I've then got a half inch collet to fit the collet block so that I can do the 90 deg uh, 180 degree slot and the two detents. So I'm going to crack on now and turn this down to a shoulder to the blueprint. Here is the blueprint. There is the blueprint. So I'll crack on with this and I'll bring you back when I've got the first bit turned. Bye now. Well that's it for Wednesday folks. Uh, five o'clock and uh, that's as far as I've got believe it or not we have a milling cutter in there <laughs> uh, I can see I'm gonna have problems with this with access because this chuck's a bit big for the milling cutter but it's the smallest one I've got and the collet's correct and I've been looking at I've got I've got I've got a much smaller collet chuck but I've forgotten it's a Morse taper one and, and I don't want to put loads of Morse taper adapters in there because of course you can't really secure them I've got an odd collet here I don't know what the devil this is first of all it has no thread in the bottom like it should have and then it's got a little iron screw in the side so if anybody's got any idea what that's for let me know but it's a bit cockamamie to me Maybe it's maybe it's something that's part of me. It wouldn't be a problem to put a thread in there. It doesn't seem to be particularly hard. Uh, maybe it's unhardened. But there you go. What an odd thing. Little iron screw there. Weird. Right. Okay. So tomorrow, I have to centre up over the pin. Probably put some support on that end. Although I wouldn't have thought I'll need it with that tiny milling cutter and uh, mill the slot in the right place because I've got infinite metal to have a go at this but uh, there we go right catch you all tomorrow for Thursday's fun and games bye now
Good morning folks, Wednesday, or is it Thursday, I can't remember, but it's 11.15 and there is a slot cut. I wasn't going to film so you could all watch me smash an eighth inch milling cutter and as it is I didn't, I've done it. Right, onward. Turn it over, put two spot holes in it, but first I need to mark them out. So I'll do that next. Bye now. And there we go, folks. There's the original, bent out of all proportion. And here's my version. But it's too detent. Now I've got to reduce this. There's quite a lot of bar in there. I've got to reduce this diameter, not necessarily to that diameter, but to a diameter that will fit in there and be easily grabbable to pull it out. I'll push it in and then I've got to uh, nail this. So I'm going to take it out of the collet block now and uh, back to the lathe. But I'm well pleased with that. I think that's probably, that's probably the narrowest slot I've ever milled. Uh, Oh, at least it's the, it's the narrowest slot I've ever milled since uh, many years ago when I had much better eyesight. <laughs> All right, folks. Bye now. And there we go, folks. Just gone two o'clock, and we have an old pin and a new pin. As you can see, that one's just a bit bent. That slot put me on my metal. It's about at the edge of what my eyes can see. I could do with better lighting on the milling machine, but uh, job done. Right, let's now. I think what I'm going to do now is put the cams into the headstock, fit the headstock to the bed, and I'm not chasing it a grease. Well, I don't, yeah, probably, probably be best to build it. Probably best to build it up on the uh, on the lathe. So I'm going to fit the cams to the uh, headstock, and I'm going to set the cam uh, height so that when you give it a quarter of a turn, it locks the headstock to the bed. So that's next job. So I shall crack on with that, and when I'm on with it, I'll bring you back. But thank goodness for that, eh? Job done. Bye now. And there we go, folks. Just gone three o'clock. Locked out. Locked in. Perfect. Well pleased that that's done. Bye now. Right folks, Friday morning. And there we have the ball pin fitted. And working lovely. Drops into its hold out detent and drops into its hold in detent. Smashing job. I've also had a revelation with these. Now these are over centre cams that lift these steel blocks underneath the bed and clamp the headstock to the bed. Now I was being told that these were really difficult to set up and they were a bloody nuisance. And I agree, they are a nuisance, but I found a way of doing it that works on this machine, right? So what I did, I slid this one out this end and turned it one flat at a time until that locked. And then I found, that's great, but you can't move this one because there isn't room. So what I did was slid the whole plot to this end and turned it round out here and then slid it back and doing it one flat at a time you come to a point where you've got the exact right dimension so that's that job done so next job I want to tackle is these felts because I'm not happy with them they're, they're there but they rag up, they pick up they're picking up on the uh, on the spindle and you can't reliably in actual fact I think they may be settled a bit 
you can't reliably put the spindle in and have it free. I'm going to take them out and I'm going to maybe see about making a punch, uh, a cutter, to cut one exactly the right size. Let's see about that. Let's see if we can do that. I'm just going to try the spindle back in first though, and see what I can do with it. Right, onward. Hey, hey, hey. Right. When I realised that you could slide the headstock along to this end and make the adjustments there, I got it locked on straight away. Then, I recut the felt and forgot to film it. Right, but what we have now is a very free spindle. What I need to know next, and I'm going to have a chat with the man this weekend, is how to adjust the bearings. Because the bearings have three grub screws that push on three pallets that push the bearing back into the cone, into the taper that's ground inside here. And then they have three uh, cheese head screws which pull the bearing back this way. So I assume it's a compromise between moving it in and out and checking it for freedom. But this is uh, this is very working very well at the moment. And uh, there's actually there's actually oil coming out of the bearing, so I know it's getting oiled properly. But there we go. That's gone on rather well. That's all gone back together rather nicely. And the uh, the back gear goes in. So there you go. That's what I've got done today. It's Friday. It's just gone three o'clock, and I've sort of run out of creativity. I've been having a look at this uh, this collet tube as well, and uh, there's various things I need to know about that, but. I don't actually know if anybody's got an original B9 collet tube that I could uh, have a look at some pictures of. But there you go. Okay, I'm going to have a cup of tea and if I do any more, I'll show you what I've done. Bye now. So, there we go folks. What do you do when you've run out of creativity for the week? Well, you start stripping paint off because it's easy and you don't have to think about it. And then, you have a tidy up. Clean the floor. Clean the machines down. And get ready for the end of the week. So, all clean. All clean. So, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for sending me all the likes, please make comments, and I'll see you all next week. And don't forget to subscribe, because it costs now and it, makes the it pushes the channel upwards. So please subscribe. Bye now.